Eagle Radio's West End Special. This is Eagle Radio, live and local across Surrey and Hampshire. And what a brilliant show in London's West End right now. I'm delighted to be joined uh, by Katie Braven and Glynis Barber from the musical Beautiful, the Carol King musical. Ladies, how are you? Good, thank Very you. Very well, thank you. Well, I must start by saying massive congratulations, Katie. Olivier Award winner, I'm... Best Actress in a Musical. How does that feel? <laughs> Well, every time someone says that, I'm just in shock again. Um, yeah, it feels amazing, but uh, I just can't really believe it. It hasn't sunk in yet. <laughs> what did it feel like that night, just being oh, at the Olivier's and then... Just even being there was extraordinary. You know, I, I watch it every year and it's, you know, um, it's an amazing ceremony. It's a, a love the Olivier's and, uh, yeah, I couldn't really believe it. And we opened as well. We opened the Olivier's, so that was... That was scary. <laughs> yeah, amazing, amazing feeling. So the acceptance speech was a doddle after that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't know what to bit. say. Was it the worst bit? Yeah, I mean, you just don't ever expect you're going to win. So um, so I didn't really know what to say. But um, I just, uh, I know I forgot to thank probably a lot of people. But um, yeah, it was extraordinary to be up there. I keep replaying it in my head. And yeah, it's extraordinary. And of course, it's all because of this brilliant show, uh, mm. Beautiful. Talk to us a little bit about what it's all about, Glynis. Well, it is it is the story of Carol King, as we all know, and which drew me to it because I was a huge fan. But I think uh, what surprised me when I read the script, and I think really surprises people when they come to see the show, is that actually the story of Carol King is is um, a little different to what we all thought because I thought her life began with tapestry, which is where I knew her from. Um, But actually, her story begins in the 1950s when she was 16 years old and she was a songwriter and uh, she got married at a very young age to Jerry Goffin. Uh, She used to write the music, he used to write the lyrics and he is a complete and utter genius and together they wrote hit after hit and so for many, many years she was a songwriter And it was only after, you know, their marriage had ended in the early 1970s that she actually, for the first time, became a singer. So it's their journey, you know, from the beginning to that point. And um, it's an incredible journey. And and there there were so many songs that I I didn't even know that they had written and also incorporated into into the story of, of their best friends, who were Cynthia Weil and Barry Mann, who were also incredible songwriters and and when you see I mean I had no idea that they wrote the songs they wrote and you know that they're all in the show and when you see these songs you just cannot believe the songs these four people wrote extraordinary and with when you're telling a story like this it's essential that you've done your research isn't it and I guess that was a massive part before you'd even entered the rehearsal room absolutely spell especially for Katie playing Carol yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, a lot of research. I, I, I found out I got the job. Oh, when was it? Sort of maybe a few months before we started. So I just got on to watching as much um, videos of Carol as I could and uh, reading her biography, which is fascinating. It's called A Natural Woman. I really recommend it if anyone is a fan of Carol. Um, so, yeah, a lot of research. Yeah. And Glynis, you get to play Carol's mum. I play her mum. And, I, you know, I try to, you know, it's, it's written in a particular way in the play. And I I don't even know how incredibly accurate that is. I, I try to do some research online, but I was much more limited in the information I could come up with about her mother. But um, some facts were quite interesting because she she was an incredibly creative woman. She got a college degree in the 1930s in working class Brooklyn, uh, which I think is quite an amazing thing for a woman in those days. And, um, you know, she used to write plays, she used to act, she used to direct. And, and she obvious, obviously, Carol grew up in a very creative household that um, I think you know, clearly laid the foundation and created the environment in which her incredible talent could grow. And of course, night on night, you're being able to hear and perform such incredible songs. Uh, Is there any moments in the show because of the music you can pick out as a favourite or does it change every night? It does change every night. It's a, yeah, um, it really does. But um, I think one of the, the lo- really lovely moments sort of in the first half is um, is them discovering and writing Will You Still Love Me Tomorrow, which they then sell to the Shirelles. And it's a real moment for Carol and Jerry. Um, you know, it means they can 
you know, actually pay the rent and move out of the mum's house. And, you know, it's a, it's kind of remarkable seeing them actually write this song. And so many people have a relationship with that song. Um, so to see the actual writers write it and their journey with the song is quite remarkable, I think. And Glynis, for you, is there is there a moment that stands out? Well, do you know, I mean, I, I literally know every word on uh, the album of Tapestry, <laughs> I'm, you know, um, and I love every single song. I, I mean, you know, Will You Still Love Me Tomorrow was always a favourite. But it's funny when you listen. I mean, it's, it's so joyous being able to listen to it every night. I, I can't tell you. It's so uplifting. I just love it. But, um, you know, at different times, different um, songs stay with you. And uh, yes, I became very obsessed with One Fine Day at Chile. That that just got stuck in my mind. But however, I don't think it's on tapestry. So I don't no, know the words. Not. I still don't know the words. And I'm still, <laughs> I keep meaning to <laughs> and learn them so I can, yeah. I can only sing one verse. That's quite, I'm, I'm working on it, okay? I'm working on it. <laughs> uh, and I'm certainly hearing from you here, Glynis, that you're a fan. Oh, I am. I, I adore Carol King. I mean, if you had told me, uh, you know, in my teens when I was sort of listening day and night to Tapestry that I'd be, I'd be playing her mother decades later, <laughs> I mean, that's just completely surreal. Uh, and both of you have got so much experience, been in many different shows. Um, where does this rank? At the top, definitely. <laughs> sorry, sorry, the other shows. Um, uh, no, for me, like, this is... Um, I Well, I never thought I'd be... Um, playing Carol King, you know, like Linda said, if anyone had told me that um, that I'd be playing one of my idols in the West End um, and getting to sing things like You've Got a Friend and Natural Woman and So Far Away every night, um, I'd never have believed it. I didn't think that this, you know, you, you can't dream these things up. <laughs> Well, you're certainly living the dream. And I'm, I haven't seen the show yet. I really definitely want to come and see it. It's at the Aldwych Theatre, isn't it? Um, and we're really looking forward to seeing it. Thank you, ladies, for chatting to us. And best Thank of luck. Thank you. Thanks and um, continue to be brilliant. And once again, congratulations on that big Olivier win. Thank you. Bye. Keep up to date at 964eagle.co.uk.